Hello everyone and welcome back to Biology with Mrs. Evans. Today we are starting our next unit which is on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And in this unit we are going to be looking at how do cells get the energy that they need. And this video is going to focus on what energy is and how cells um, or how organisms basically obtain the energy that they need to carry out the different processes that go on uh, in their bodies. So we're going to start with what is energy. In eighth grade, you should have learned that energy is the ability to do work. Um, you should have also learned that there are different types of energy. You have thermal energy, you have mechanical energy, you have light energy, um, etc. And this particular video is focusing on how do cells get the energy they need in order to carry out the various functions that um, take place in an organism. So all living things, regardless of what type they are, whether they are a prokaryote or a eukaryote, uh, whether they are unicellular or multicellular, all organisms have energy requirements to carry out the various functions uh, that take place in the cell. So we're going to begin our discussion on basically how can organisms be uh, classified based on their energy requirements. The first is if an organism can make their own food. If an organism can make their own food, we refer to them as autotrophs. Uh, troph is basically energy and auto means self. So autotrophs have the ability to make their own food. Uh, we also refer to them as producers. And they're going to make their uh, food basically or their own food in one of two ways. They're either going to do photosynthesis and that is using uh, light energy to create basically chemical energy. And then the other method is chemosynthesis. You heard me talk about this earlier in the year. This is the process that um, organisms basically take chemicals and use those to make food. And you heard me talk about the bacteria that are down in the hydrothermal vents. They're going to use the hydrogen sulfides that are coming out of the vents to make food for themselves. So an organism that is able to make their own food can be referred to as an autotroph or as a producer. Organisms that cannot make their own food, and that would be uh, us, um, those are what we call heterotrophs um, or consumers. Those are organisms that must eat in order to obtain energy um, from the food that they eat. So an example of a heterotroph, obviously I just said us, um, anything that eats, so a deer, a cow, um, a coyote, any of those. Mushrooms also are a... Um, heterotroph because they do not do photosynthesis. They must consume um, basically materials around them and uh, we'll talk about how that works in later units. So heterotroph means that they must consume in order to obtain energy. So energy, like I said, comes in uh, many forms, light, heat, electricity. Um, in the cell, the energy that they need is in the form of what we call ATP. ATP is the abbreviation for adenosine triphosphate and that basically tells you the components of the energy molecule. Um, ATP, I like to think of it as Pop Rocks. Um, that was a, a favorite candy of mine when I was a kid. Um, Probably everybody has experienced that, hopefully. And basically, you put Pop Rocks in your mouth, they go off for you know about 10-15 seconds, and then once they have um, done their magic, um, that's the extent of it. And that's exactly what ATP is. ATP is a um, burst of energy that uh, the cells use to carry out specific functions. It is an immediate source of energy that only lasts um, for a short period of time. So let's look at ATP. So ATP, as I said, is based on the components of it. So ATP is cons uh, consists of adenine, which you see here um, on the left. This is adenine. And then it consists of ribose. And ribose is what we call a pentose sugar. Um, notice that it is in the shape of a pentagon. And then you have three phosphates. That's why it's called triphosphate. So you have these three phosphates here. And then in unit two, we talked about energy and and uh, when bonds are formed, we said that the energy is being stored in those bonds. And then we said that when bonds break, energy is being released. So ATP is the energy molecule that cells are going to use uh, to carry out the different functions that go on in the cell. And the, the energy 
is coming from the breaking of these bonds. So this bond here between the second and third phosphate is a high energy bond. This bond here is um, also somewhat of a high energy bond. And then the bond here would be a low energy bond. So by removing this phosphate from uh, the molecule, uh, the cell is gaining energy because when the bond breaks, remember, energy is being released. When a phosphate is removed, it creates adenosine diphosphate, um, ADP uh, for short. And adenosine phosphate diphosphate is also an energy molecule, but it doesn't have as much energy as ATP. So when cells have extra um, energy to store, it will add a phosphate to ADP. ADP is basically a recyclable uh, molecule that the cells are constantly adding uh, a phosphate to and then removing that phosphate uh, when they need uh, the energy from the molecule. So when we eat, our bodies are going to break down the food that we uh, have consumed and it's going to make ATP and we're going to look about uh, we're going to look at how the cell does that um, later on in another video. The main thing from this is that you know that ATP is the main source of energy for cells because it provides basically short bursts of energy for the cells to carry out various functions. And we already talked about uh, active transport, so moving molecules uh, against a concentration gradient, uh, the cell is going to need ATP to repair uh, any damage that may have happened, etc. So just know that ATP is the basic energy source in all cells. And then again, uh, energy is being released when the bonds that hold the uh, phosphate to ADP is basically broken. So when you break a bond, a, uh, energy is going to be released. And the high energy bond is between the second and the third phosphate. So that's a key thing for you to be able to discuss um, how basically energy is stored in ATP and that is simply by forming the bond, adding a uh, phosphate to ADP and then how energy is being released and that's simply by breaking that bond. Um, and again, ATP is going to be used for uh, active transport, making protein, uh, every time your muscles contract, and because muscle cells uh, require a lot of energy, uh, the muscle cells themselves can also store um, ATP for later use. So this is just comparing ADP to ATP. They are both energy molecules. They both um, have adenine and ribose sugar, and they both contain phosphates. ADP only contains two phosphates, and ATP um, contains three phosphates. So you'll need to be able to compare and contrast ADP and ATP. So they're both uh, energy molecules. They both can provide energy for the cell. ATP can provide much more energy than ADP, and often we refer to them as basically ATP as a full, fully charged battery, um, and ADP is a partially charged battery. It still provides energy to the cell, it just doesn't provide the amount of energy that ATP does uh, because ATP has that third phosphate um, attached to it. So cells rely on um, ATP because that is basically a small energy molecule that the cells can use, whereas carbohydrates and lipids are basically much bigger molecules, so they need to be broken down in order, to, uh, in order for the cell to be able to use those um, and get the energy from them. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about how uh, basically cells get the energy that they need, plants and other producers are going to use photosynthesis and chemosynthesis in order to get that energy. And then heterotrophs like us um, are going to be breaking down the foods that we eat. Plants also do uh, cellular respiration. Um, when there is no light, they have to have an um, energy source as well, so they're going to do cellular respiration. So that's basically what this unit is all about, and we will be looking at photosynthesis and in the next video, and then in the video after that we will look at cellular respiration. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.